open-ended. Okay. Our topic is the framework 16. Yeah, so what? I have only spent about two minutes with it. Okay. I actually haven't watched our review yet. Okay. I didn't read it. Okay. So I would like you, I haven't even read our topic notes. Sure. I would like you to tell me if it's oh. any good. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to, to silently read the topic no, notes? No, or, no, or no. Just yeah, no I, I, okay. Because there's positive and negative points. All right. So yeah, the framework 16 is finally out. We released a full review this week, yeah. which was written and hosted without. Pretty well received by the community, by the way. Linus' involvement. And yes, I do, I do believe it was. Uh, other outlets have reviewed the 16 quite positively. Alex Waro from Tom's Guide called it the laptop I'd buy for myself. Some of the positive points are extreme modularity and repairability. Framework says that the graphics card can be swapped in just a few minutes, which both we and The Verge were able to replicate. That I've tried. Remember, I have cool. played around with yes. the, like... Prototype um, or something? Yeah, uh, like a mechanical sample. Right. Quite a while back. So even early, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. I haven't touched... Uh, I, I haven't touched... I have spent about two minutes with the final one that we that we have here. Great future-proofing potential and customizability compared to other laptops. Mm. Of note, the fully customizable keyboard deck and six expansion card slots to the Framework 13's 4. Good screen quality, easily outperformed similar laptops running the same graphics card in terms of cooling. And then we come to the negative points. Okay, now hold on a second. There's a couple of things here that from just chatting with people internally, I, I know that we didn't necessarily agree with in our video. So one of them is that Jake had some concerns about backlight bleed or not bleed, but like mm -hmm. a um, uneven backlighting at the edges of the screen. Did anybody else have any kind of feedback on that? Like I'm, this, is a, this is a highly interactive section, guys. I want to hear from you in the chat. Do other people have this laptop or are you asking about other people's reviews? I'm asking about other people's reviews. Understood. Yeah, because The Verge, according to Noki, uh, the one and only timestamp guy. Um, People are suggesting that we react to the video live. We would be able to do that because it's our own video. The Verge rated it 5 out of 10. The screen? No, the whole thing. Whoa. Yeah. So not everybody gave it a good review, although The Verge did complain about crashing issues. Um, so... I would say that would probably significantly impact the score. And I didn't, I didn't, from the conversations I've had with Ploof and Jake, they didn't say anything about crashing on our unit. And John, uh, John from the lab didn't bring it up with me either. Interesting. I fix it? According to Focus Forte and DNA Gecko, I fix it. I uh, gave it a 10 out of 10 for repairability, I guess. Okay. People want a live reaction. Dan, is that something you can do from there? Because Dan is not in the studio. Ooh, The Verge has some interesting points here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to my screen real fast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I want to know what's going on, man. This, this is my investment, yo. That doesn't look good. What is that? He's trying to lift the screen with one finger. Oh. Which I could do with like this one, and it's not going to do that. Uh, I mean, this one does. That yeah. much? Yeah, look. That doesn't look like as much as... In that photo, is it because of the angle it's taken at? No, it's less than that. Yeah. It's less than that. That is yep. a lot of, yep. of screen bend. You're going to have a little bit, you know, if you try to lift a, a screen by the corner, you're going to have a little bit, but that in the photo is quite a lot. Um, I don't see where they did the natural rating. I think it's at the very top. I like your sound effects. Thank you. Uh, that's not the very top, Luke. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I that's actually I don't see section. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Control F5. Oh, there it is. In green. Big green box. Got it. He's got this. What's it out of? 10. Okay. Yeah, not 5. <laughs> yeah. They said the good is fully user repairable, unprecedented customization, competent mid-range gaming performance, and excellent 16x10 screen. They said the bad was regularly froze during testing, additional strange glitches, often runs hot and loud, oh. and some of the panels feel flimsy. Okay, I think we need to live react to this. Okay, Dan, is that something we can do? Live yeah, react to what? Really do Our own video? Is pull up the video on your laptop, and then okay. I guess that counts as a reaction channel. 
Um, okay. Well, it's it's our own video. Yeah, yeah. It's fine to react to your own video. I don't know. Okay, I have Maybe I have not. pulled it up. I have pulled it up. Uh, what am I uh, What am I supposed to do now? I just play it. Will Luke be able to hear it? I think yeah, I'll, I'll just send it through your headphones. Okay. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna try it. We're gonna try don't it. Good. Audio from your laptop yet? You don't? Are you sure? No. Well, I'm not playing it yet. It's 18 and a half minutes. Are we gonna react to the whole thing? Okay. Uh, we could watch at 1.75. Sure. Okay, that'll only take like 13, 14 minutes then. I'm not gonna have, uh... Oh yeah, I guess I can watch it there. Okay, sure. Yeah, cool. Okay, we Bias, good? I've got audio from you elsewhere. You have audio from uh, me okay. elsewhere? What does that even mean? Yeah. I didn't I even I fart. That's good. Uh, there. They, oh, they apparently The Verge and... didn't have a full production unit. Did we have a full production unit? Yeah. The Verge posted an update that they are getting a full production unit to redo the review. Oh. Where is that? Oh, possible. man. I could have told Framework not to send a pre-prod unit for a review. Yeah, they probably shouldn't have done that. That was a uh, completely where, unforced where error. Where is this post? Uh, where did they say this? I don't know. Uh, noted and we're certainly committed to make a from the total list of issues. I don't want to just like believe chat right away Okay, oh yeah, okay post from Sean Hollister framework will send us another lap uh, another framework 16 and here's What it will fix we told framework we had several different stability issues um, So I was a little frustrated to see the company CEO suggest I only encountered one But I'm happy to say framework will send the verge a final production unit with quite a list of hardware and software fixes Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't know if they said that they're. Oh, apparently the re review, the review but. units were pre production units with known issues. Interesting. Okay. Well, guys, look. I'm. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like, let's watch it then, shall we? Dan, we good to go? I think so. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Well, hold on one sec. I just want to. I just want to fix the the quote from earlier. People said like, oh, they're going to redo their review and stuff. I don't think. I don't see them actually saying that. Um, and this looks like it's Luke laptop. Yeah um, So this is a post from Sean Hollister mm -hmm. saying these things um, But then it says it, it's linking a reddit thread I, I don't see anywhere that says like we're gonna redo our review it did say in the review that um, they would be open to reevaluating if the issues are fixed, I think. But okay. that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do it. I mean, as someone I just who, want to make sure I didn't quote them incorrectly. I would take the quote that you just saw on screen as an actual quote, not what I said. As someone who does this work, um, I would say that my annoyance level would be extremely high if I found a bunch of issues and then someone was like, well, it was pre-prod, all those are like fixed. And I'm just like, okay, but that's not, I, for sure. that's not what I experienced. I can only review yeah. what is actually in front of me. Totally. Um, okay, we ready? Yeah. That is a great yep. first frame. Go for it. The all new Framework 16 is here and I'm super excited about it. Not only because I invested my own money in this company and I want them to succeed, but because that? it has several tricks up its sleeve that are genuinely yeah. nutty. That's right, for years, companies have struggled to make an upgradable right. laptop at all, let alone one meant for gaming. It's finally here. And did I mention that every single part of this machine can be purchased individually on their store and replaced by the end user? What world is this? Unfortunately, a world where trying to be objective doesn't change the fact that I have a vested interest in framework success, which makes reviewing their products a bit tricky. So I don't need to take my word for it. The rest of the script, I haven't even read it. To recuse myself from our review, Alex, our resident laptop connoisseur, Jake, who actually nice. an active framework 16 pre-order, and nice. John from the lab are going to be telling you guys all about it, both the good nice. and the bad. Um, this is John's first on-camera appearance in a mainline video, I think. Oh, cool. So I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll be seeing it for the first time. Nice. Fingers crossed that they didn't bite off more than they can chew with this thing. Unlike this easily digestible segue to our sponsor, Seasonic, more than my own son. Smooth. Unlike every other laptop I've used, everything on the surface is modular, save the power button up here that has a fingerprint sensor in it. You can adjust the keyboard and trackpad positioning. You can add a numpad so cool. or a macro That's pad pretty on the right sick, here. You or if that macro pad isn't oh. for you, they even have these LED matrix displays. Do these do anything besides reducing battery life? No. Do I really like them? Yes. <laughs> All <of the> <laughs> neat. However, the other new party trick, the bespoke and upgradable removable discrete AMD graphics card, is so sick. Many companies have attempted to put upgradable graphics in a laptop in the past, but the upgrade operation has never been something that I recommend the average tech enthusiast undertake. Framework has Okay, we should talk a little bit about why that is. Um, I saw a lot of feedback um, either on just like social media, on Reddit. Um, I read through the comments on this video because that's 
what I do rather than watching videos. You know this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I saw quite a few people bring up XM, MXM. It's like, oh, yeah, framework invented MXM. Uh, good job. It's, it's like, it's like, misunderstand the whole situation speed run any percent <laughs> the reason you should do that you should have a leaderboard based on like how fast they commented <laughs> sorry keep going oh. the problem with mxm which for those of you who aren't familiar with it and i don't blame you because it's been kind of dead for a long time yeah uh the mxm is a is a just a, a smaller version of the pci express interface where just the full connector has been shrunk a little bit and it's a pcie by 16 interface and then board spec um the problem with mxm is that nvidia in particular but to my knowledge amd as well has never been able to standardize exactly what the layout of the board will be. So in theory, it's a good idea because you could just have a card that has a GPU and the memory and the VRMs on it and you just slide it into a slot on the motherboard. It's a sideways slot, kind of like an M.2 slot. And you just put it in, screw it in, and boom, upgraded GPU. The problem with that is that because NVIDIA and... To my knowledge, AMD, it's just NVIDIA I know in particular has been adamant that they just give up and don't want to do it. And, and they've, been, they've been very oppositional when it comes to any attempts by laptop manufacturers or others to, to make MXM a thing. Um, NVIDIA and AMD have not been able to standardize where those components are on the board. Not only that, but they haven't been able to standardize what kind of form they might take. Do they have an IHS? Are they a bare die? How many chips are there? What layout will they be in? How much power will they draw? And therefore, how much heat will they dissipate? So what's happened is that while MXM is, you know, a standard, it's only a standard insofar as it's a slot. Everything else about it pretty much had to be redesigned from generation to generation to accommodate the new layout of every component on the board and the new power requirements. So what MXM turned into was essentially a way of making sure that your laptop was going to be thicker to accommodate this board that sat on top of another board in this interface. Um, and that's about it. There were still some benefits, right? Like you could have the ability to configure your laptop at the time of ordering, and they could put a different GPU in as long as it had been designed with that particular generation in mind. But overall, this sort of, you know, GPU, upgradable GPU laptop nirvana that we all thought MXM could help us achieve has not been possible. And as for the laptop manufacturers, I don't think you're going to see any appetite for it ever again. I mean, Dell got burned on it when they promised that they had this Alienware that was going to be upgradable from one generation to the next. And then my understanding is NVIDIA basically was like, oh, well, sorry about that. Nope, the power envelope is much higher, so it's not going to happen. Uh, it could have been Dell Alienware that screwed that up. I suspect as well that that's what happened with MSI, who also said, hey, We've got this Titan, I think it was something, uh, something 80, something Titan. Uh, they had this like big fat laptop that was, they were like, yeah, it, you're going to be able to upgrade the What's GPU. The mechanical keyboard, that one? They ended up getting class <laughs> action sued for that one because they didn't offer an upgrade because it wasn't possible, it turned out. Um, and my understanding is that would have, I can't think of anyone whose fault that would have been other than NVIDIA. Uh, I can't think of any reason MSI would have promised that other than that they thought that they had a roadmap from their partner that would allow them to provide an upgradable laptop. So the, the point I'm getting at with all of this is that this was an innovation and it is one that matters because the way that Framework has done it solves a lot of the problems of MXM. It doesn't solve all of them. I told Framework when they initially told me, and this is, this is quite a while back, when they initially told me we're doing a gaming laptop, I was like, okay, you realize that um, everyone has tried this 
And every time it has not worked and here are the problems. And they were like, nah, dog, we think we've got this. Um, and I was like, okay, uh, you're going to, you're going to have a lot of problems to solve. And one of them, they obviously still haven't solved. I, I asked them, I told them, I was like, look, what board partner is going to deliver NVIDIA GPUs? NVIDIA maintains iron fisted control over their partners. Do you think for a second that like, uh, you know, let's, let's pick up, uh, you know what? I probably know too much. So Luke, why don't you pick a board manufacturer manufacturer or just brand manufacturer uh asus sure so let's say pegatron yeah like like a board manufacturer okay there is no doubt in my mind that given you know some time and given that the resources their, and the their board timelines is still called pegatron uh it's complicated okay yeah uh, but Pegatron 100% exists and, and is a, oh, yeah. Wow. I thought that was renamed. Okay. Contract manufacturer. Yep. Um, okay. So, um, cause it was Pegasus. Yeah. So now it's Pegatron and Asus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, the point is given probably weeks, right? Not even months, probably given weeks, Pegatron could design and manufacture, uh, a framework module for the framework 16 with an NVIDIA something or other. They won't because NVIDIA needs to sign off on absolutely everything their GPUs go into, whether you like bought them and they're like yours, right? Or not. So that's like how much RAM you can put on the board, what kind of uh, cooling, what kind of you know, boost clock speeds, how much power you're allowed to deliver to it. I, basically everything, even things as stupid as, okay, we want to do one with a blower style cooler instead of you know an exhaust all the air inside your case cooler because it's better for small form factor enthusiasts my understanding allegedly blah 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 all of that stuff is that nvidia will clamp down on that because they're worried about it cannibalizing their workstation cards which do have that style of cooler because yeah. it's more ideal for stacking them so this that's what prevents you from stacking up 4080s is Very NVIDIA cool. won't let board partners build cards that have coolers that better facilitate it. It's like, you know, f*** off, right? <laughs> so as far as I can tell, Framework still hasn't solved that problem. If you're someone at NVIDIA who is just, you know, not a complete f***ing asshole, um, then by all means, if you're listening to this, advocate for why the f*** you can't just put a GPU on a module and plug it into a laptop because f*** off. It doesn't matter. Just chill. I know, I probably haven't made the most... A little spicy today. ...diplomatic <laughs> argument for it, but it's just... This isn't the first time I've been frustrated about this. Okay, yeah, 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 whatever. Invested how, can you, in, how can you go after your, your employer like, like that? In, in, invested in framework or not, this isn't the first time that I've talked about this, and this isn't the first time that I've been really frustrated by it. Yeah. Um, I was at uh, Computex one year, I think. Yeah, it must have been Computex, because I don't think Silverstone... Oh, no. Yeah, they used to do CES, but not on the show floor. I was on the show floor for sure. So it must have been Computex. Yeah. Um, and I had a really frustrating conversation with Silverstone because they had this really cool little eGPU back when Thunderbolt external GPUs were really starting to take off. So this would have been like, I don't know, four or five years ago or something like that. And instead of being designed for desktop graphics cards, so like being huge, it was designed for... Little MXM cards? MXM! They had gotten their hands on, it must have been, it was either a 1080 Ti or like a 2080 or something. This was a long time ago, so I don't remember which one it was. Must have been a 1080 Ti. Say, probably not 20. Because it was around the same time that Zotac was doing those super cute little gaming, uh, like little tiny gaming things that had MXM in them as well. And uh, they were like, yeah, so we made this thing. And I was like, that is a super cool thing. How on earth are you going to get any boards for it? And they're like, well, we're advocating for it. We're going to board manufacturers. We're going to try and get someone to, to build these things for us. Pfft, dead. So why can't we have cute little tiny external GPUs? Because f*** you, we don't want people putting our GPUs in anything that we don't deign them to be the thing that it goes in. Just f*** off. You know? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. 
Like, I love the good things NVIDIA does. In fact, we're going to talk about one of them a little bit later. Um, they've got this cool new AI yeah. SDR to HDR thing. I have no problem with the good things NVIDIA does, but part of acknowledging things as they are is that you call it when something's good, and you call it when something is bullshit. And them refusing to allow anyone to manufacture their GPUs into a form factor that they just don't like is bullshit. Anyway. Shall we? Uh, some people are asking that we do 1.5 instead of 1.75. Your call. Okay. Sure. Uh, I'm on it. I'm on it like a bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> he's, try he's trying to soften it up after being so spicy. No, no, I'm good. I don't jokes care. About I'll get spicy. You want? <laughs> You want more spice? I got more spice. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get there. I, I got more people, spice. People are commenting. Look at Alex's hat. Is that an LTT toque? Oh, that's also what not the an, fuck, Alex? That's also not an LTT sweater. Yeah. What's happening? It's knocked. will allow it. Okay, fair enough. They're 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 pros. <laughs> but come on, Alex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we ready? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. Uh, I don't have any audio, Dan. Damn. Save us. Oh. Oh. It's my fault. Well, what did I do? It looks like it's up. I mean, I... Uh, here. You good? You see it? I mean, I'm... I, yeah, I, I'm definitely... I'm, I'm definitely clicking the same thing. I haven't changed anything. <laughs> Why is nothing ever easy? You know? Uh... <laughs> Okay, it's definitely working through ConnectSent HD audio. How about BMD HDMI? You see it, Dan? No. Here, do you I see mine? <laughs> yep, I see yours. Okay. Okay. Maybe we just play mine. Sure, hold on. Let Why? me just give it. Let me give Why? it the old unplug and replug, <clears throat> and we'll see if mine lights back up. And otherwise, then uh, we'll we'll go to Luke. My back? No. Okay, I guess right. it's going to be looped then. All right, how far are you in? Yeah, I can't read it. I am... 225? 225, yep. Oh, I could read it. Look at me go. What a guy. Look at his eyes. My eyes like functioned. <laughs> I'm so stoked. That was bound to happen at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Full screen. Switch to my screen. Slightly ahead of where you were. Okay, cool. Ready? Yeah. Yep. However, it says the GPU swap can be done in a couple minutes, so... Let's test that. A little quiet. First, power down the system, then unlock the tabs and take off the touchpad and the keyboard. Open the little plastic flap here covering. This is a fair amount of disassembly to swap a component. Five screws and remove it from the system. Framework includes a screwdriver with this laptop, but the knock with screwdriver from LTTstore.com is a little bit nicer. Thankfully, the screws are captive, so you'll be hard pressed to lose them. Just make sure you don't lose the interposer itself. I'd recommend screwing it back into the GPU once you have that out. Speaking of which, just put two more screws and the entire GPU should slide out. Dang. So that's it. That whole thing back there is the GPU, and that's how they solved it. Every other GPU swap on a laptop I've done. That's cool. Holy heck, this was seamless. And if you don't want GPU, you can just save over half a pound of weight and an inch of length by just not having a GPU anymore. But all of this modularity comes at a steep price, possibly for my boss, because the keyboard on the Framework 16 is frankly unacceptable for a laptop of this price. The closest comparison I have is the Acer Nitro 5, which starts at $750, and it is just okay. No, here, one sec. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dan's getting me to do all the things. Okay. It is now maximum. Well, testing Let me go back slightly. What did you react to? Now, if you don't want a GPU, you can just save right. over half a pound of weight and an inch of length by just not having a GPU anymore. But <laughs> all of this modularity comes at a steep price, possibly for my boss, because the keyboard on the framework <laughs> is frankly unacceptable for a laptop of this price. The Ooh. closest comparison I have is the yeah. Acer Nitro 5, which starts at $750, Ooh. and it is just okay at $750. While testing the framework 16, I wasn't able to get up to my full typing speed, in particular while doing really quick double presses due to the chassis flex. A huge disappointment oh. compared to the excellent keyboard on the framework 13. But yeah, see, that's really frustrating see, the i'm glad you brought that up plate, because in this area it has been better in the past yeah because the framework 13 actually has a really solid keyboard and that was one of the things that i highlighted as being <clears throat> particularly impressive about it was that in spite of its modularity and repairability it still had a good keyboard when that was one of the justifications that i could see for not having a repairable design yeah was that you wanted to maintain chassis stiffness so that you could have a good keyboard Hmm. And with the keyboard off, you can really just see how not supportive this super thin yeah. piece of metal is. 
Fortunately, yeah. this being the framework, disassembling only takes about a minute. And we were able to chuck some okay. demo pads in the areas where it was squishiest. And holy crap, that is so much better. Oh, the okay. The chassis... That's actually maybe more frustrating? Yeah. It seems like the fix was easy. Um, yeah, I'm really not... Okay, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sure if that's my favorite thing ever. Um... It's no, cool no, that uh, you can fix it. It's cool that Alex found that. Yeah, that's that's super cool. Yeah. Well, good job, good job, Alex. Yeah. But I um a little questionable on framework. This isn't their first laptop. <laughs> yeah. So you'd think they'd notice something like, oh, the chassis flexes a lot. Uh oh. And uh, the tech redneck uh says framework sent an email to all pre-orders talking about this and what they're working on to fix it. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Hopefully. Cool. Hopefully okay, they cool. do fix it. Okay. All right. Yeah, Maybe I keep going. Maybe will just stuff some thermal pads under there. <laughs> we'll see. The flex influences the feel of your keyboard is huge. And the difference that this mod has made is just night and day. With the thermal pads in there, this keyboard isn't quite on the level of Asus or Alienware, but it comfortably beats MSI and Razer and brings it much more in line with the price. While you're modifying things, you okay. might want to use a couple pieces of electrical tape to remedy some of the small but visible gaps between the modules. But what? at least the trackpad... What did he just say? It's glass top. No, do not put electrical tape on your laptop. That would look way worse. That and it would leave horrible, horrible, horrible residue Goo, on it. Yeah. Yeah. I would prefer the gap. I love Alex, but he um, he's a tape enthusiast. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's certain... Uh, man, I forget what all of his favorite tapes Is there, are. Wait, could you, could you put the tape under? No, there's gaps still Even there. then, I wouldn't put it there because it'll get warm and it'll leave goo. Uh, use, use any other tape. There's, uh, there's like, there's black paper tapes that would, if that's what you want to do, that would work way better for that. Okay. ...with accurate and responsive tracking, I just wish it was a little bit bigger. Another sacrifice for the modular. Mm. One decision I really don't understand, though, are the speakers, which fire out from the sides instead of, like, up at you or bouncing off of the table like now, everything else. Now, to be clear, that can work really well. I've seen some really impressive side-firing speakers that use just algorithmic nonsense to sound great but so has alex and i'm sure he wouldn't bring this up if it wasn't actually a problem yeah fair enough that sounds good for comparison here's a similarly priced lenovo legion slim 7i okay the lenovo the lenovo is not too bad a little bit quiet but i would say perfectly acceptable and the framework is uh it's not the worst i've ever heard but Muddy. it lacks some um, treble and bass and staging get yourself a bluetooth speaker what is really good, though, is the dedicated Oof. GPU output on the back. This is wired directly to the GPU. Now, Jake wrote here that he wants me to complain about this not being a full-size display port, but personally, I think this Type-C is fine, so uh, one second. Mm. Stupid BMW. I think Type-C makes right sense there. for a laptop, personally. We asked, and they said that they tried. It just wouldn't fit with the giant heat pipes they're using to cool it. But for mm. sakes, guys, you founded your company on a laptop with modular I.O. meant to solve the dongle crisis, and you're telling me I need to carry one again? Wait a second. Modular I.O. <laughs> no way. I don't know why I didn't think about that. We gotta see if this works. No way. Look at that, John didn't believe it. 4K 120, baby. <laughs> Which is how I describe the I.O. situation in general. With two more I.O. slots. That's than the actually team, pretty funny. To connect virtually so you could just have yeah, your HDMI <laughs> module that you just have in the side of the laptop that's connected through the onboard GPU. So that, there can be a bit of a performance <laughs> penalty there if you connect that to an external display. It's, you know, not huge, but it's there. And then you can just like have that. And then you've always got your dongle with you. It's like, it's like having the, the stylus that Stored, docks inside yeah. your pen or your phone or whatever. Yeah. Okay. All that's right. That's pretty funny. I'm that, happy Jake tested that. That's pretty funny. Modules for USB-C capable of 240 watt charging, USB-A, DisplayPort, HDMI 2.0, micro SD, 2.5 gig ethernet, audio, and expanded storage. But they also released the design. So literally anyone with the right skills can design and sell their own modules, including for the GPU slot. Now, even when there isn't a GPU installed, some of that space mm -hmm. is occupied by the CPU's cooling fans, but they've already released a reference dual SSD design as an example. I'm just excited <gasps> cool. to have a place to put my Mountain Dew without sacrificing IO. <laughs> Coming from an Intel-based MacBook Pro with a grand total of four USB Type-C ports, this was the biggest breath of fresh air across my entire experience. Sure, Apple just including decent I.O. would fix most of that, but if your needs change or you want to do something silly, yeah. like running four displays off your laptop, you don't need a dongle, at least not an external one. Now, speaking of external, the power brick is this cute little 180-watt gallium nitride unit, and it's the highest wattage Type-C charger I've ever heard of, and a far cry, at least in terms of size, for most gaming laptop power bricks. Good job there, Framework. Also wow. improved from their first laptop yeah. is the disassembly now, experience, since all of the... In fairness to other laptop manufacturers, the Framework is big, but it's not super powerful. Like, that GPU is not... Uh, a mobile 4090.
or mobile 4080 or whatever else. So just, you know, something to consider. The screws are accessible from the top of the laptop. So replacing any part of this laptop is an absolute joy. Now, if you're not an experienced tinkerer, Framework has guides for replacing literally every part of the laptop. That's because if you're a nerd, you can buy this laptop Ikea style and put it together yourself. <laughs> and I take assembling a Framework laptop over doing Ikea furniture any day of the week. If you miss our Framework yeah. factory tour, a little tidbit is that they actually pre-assemble the DIY edition laptops for QC and stress testing, and then they get taken apart before shipping <coughs> so you can build it yourself. Don't believe it's that easy? Well, it took about this long to get the entire laptop to pieces. We've got the 85 watt hour battery, really? Wi-Fi 6E module, Seven a minutes. Card. That's really fast. That's really impressive. It's like wicked fast. Oh, hey, speaking of uh, framework laptops being wicked fast, uh, someone I saw someone in chat earlier asking about the Electroboom collab. When's it coming? Yeah. Because that includes a framework build challenge. Oh. Where every additional minute I take to assemble it, he turns up the value on the dog collar, the dog shock collar <laughs> that's attached to my neck. And then once I'm done... He gets to press it. Oh, wow. So I, I had to try to speed build one. Anyway. How, how fast did you do it? Well, I'm not going to spoil the video. The point oh. is that video is coming out uh, hopefully Monday. Exciting. So stay tuned. Very cool. 7700S inside the GPU module, a Ryzen 78 or 7940HS powered mainboard, two DDR5 sodium slots, two Gen 4 M.2 slots, and if you're not happy with the configurations you can see on screen here, the DIY edition can be ordered in pretty much any config you want, or cool. bare bones and you can call your own storage and RAM. Which made picking laptops to benchmark against uh, a little tricky. To see what you can get in a similarly priced and classed big name laptop, we opted for an Intel NVIDIA spec Lenovo Legion Slim 7i. Wow, that sure is a better spec. That was a much faster GPU. I am not excited to see how much faster that right. is going to be. Picking laptops to benchmark against One sec. Uh, a little tricky. To see what you can get in a similarly priced and classed big name laptop, we opted for an Intel. That's a lot of RAM. Yep. That's a big battery. Yep. That's a really fast CPU, although I think the framework will probably <laughs> hold its own when it comes to CPU. But that is that is a big <laughs> GPU. <laughs> Okay. Well, NVIDIA spec Lenovo Legion Slim 7i, and to make sure our framework is performing as it should, an ASUS Tough A16. It's cheaper, and it was supposed to be the same specs as the Framework 16. That was until they shipped the lower-end model for the press unit. The differences between the CPUs are minor, so it should still tell us if the framework is performing up to snuff. Despite those differences, okay. every game is actually a pretty tight race. Right. In Cyberpunk, nearly maxed out at 1080p. The yeah, I want to see. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is not nearly as far off the Lenovo Legion. Yeah. As I thought it might be. Like if you're talking a difference in one FPS on one percent lows, all right. I'm, I'm, no one's going to notice that. Yeah, it's pretty good. The Intel-based Lenovo is slightly ahead in average FPS with both itself and the AMD-based <coughs> ASUS model beating the framework by one frame in one percent lows. In F123, Intel's. Oh, oh, okay. This is less good. Yeah. Um. So now we're at closer to a ten percent uplift on the Lenovo. Widens a bit. Oh, wait, 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 I thought the framework was still at the bottom. No, oh. no, no, middle. Oh, tremendous. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Same modest showing in second place. Surprisingly beating out the on paper faster. Canada issues. wet. To no one's surprise in Total War Warhammer 3, the 4070 wins again. But our Yeah, this is... This That's is, a decent jump. This is way closer than I thought this whole thing was going to be. Okay. Framework squeaks past the Asus again, cool. too. It's hard to say what exactly is giving it the advantage in these games, but the faster memory and better cooling on the framework likely has something to do with it. As yeah. for productivity, the Framework 16 loses handily in Cinebench, both single <laughs> and multi-core. Oh, no surprises there, as the Asus has a lot more thermal headroom when it doesn't have yeah, a cool GPU at the same time. In Blender, our Asus laptop crushes the framework across the board, despite the only real difference being a slightly higher base and... <laughs> oh. clock, and the same can be said for video... Uh, I mean, compared to the Lenovo... Yeah... The Asus okay. gap is large, but compared to the Lenovo, it's very close. Okay. Coding with handbrake and in media editing with Premiere and Photoshop. Overall, not a lot of surprises here. The faster CPU in the Asus shines in productivity, but we expect the higher-end framework would yield the same result. As for gaming, yeah, it's not a great price to performance option, but it's not terrible either. It's just that if you want the most frames for your money, this isn't the laptop to buy. Also, you should probably just buy a desktop. But if you do buy Bottom. a laptop, <laughs> <money, laughs> <laughs> you should protect it with a skin. And brand sponsored very this portion true. of the video, so Linus could show you how. Being a relatively new company, we're we're third about. parties are making accessories it's pretty for funny. You like it. But the brand sure is, and they're going to be ready for launch. Day. They said I mean, two, sure, so it's I an ad, but yeah, yeah. it would be easier for Casetify to rip off. <laughs> I love this. Oh, they're both the same. My notes say, look how accurate these internals are. No wonder they got so pissed they got ripped off, but I actually haven't had this thing open yet, so maybe? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> While I completely ignore dbrand's explicit instructions for how to do this and make up my own method, always check their site and make sure that you do it the right way. What am I supposed to be saying though? I know they're paying me to put a skin on a laptop right now, but this is my favorite kind of integration. We're all working together to promote something we believe in. Yeah, yeah. As both an investor and hobbyist, hey, thanks, D-Brand. Shout out. 
So wow. I think I've got it pretty decently lined up right now. Uh, there's no way this battery is made in Canada. That's gotta be an Easter egg. Framework's Canadian, they're Canadian bros. Did I say framework? Be red. <laughs> Framework's not Canadian. Oh, it's not quite straight. Wow. Oh, oh okay. I, I bunged okay. it, dude. I'm ready to submit for inspection. I bunged it. Oh, I no. Just don't look right there. Just don't look right where? Don't worry about it. Don't, right where? Oh, where? It's not bad. Pretty flat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. It. Five foot one line. Oh, I know when I'm insulted. Check out the brand of the <laughs> Over to you, John. Framework is great in our battery endurance <gasps> test, both with and without the GPU. Hey, it's John from the lab. Yeah. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's really good. Yeah. Whoa. How did do so? How did do so well here? Wow. Well, that's good. That's crazy, actually. Okay. Beating ASUS and Lenovo by a few hours. The muscle <laughs> stress test. Hey. Okay. We're doing good. Yeah. I mean, to be clear. Like, those bars look a lot higher, you know? But, like, that's another uh, 15 minutes on battery if you're running an intense game. Yeah. So don't, you know, don't, don't, don't closer, read too much into won't. it. And if you rip out the GPU, you'll get even more battery life. However, none of these laptops are industry-leading for battery life, but if the battery in the framework starts to struggle after a few years, at least you can easily replace it. Was this a cold day? No, I don't think two so. Two out of three hosts are wearing toques. Well, okay. Uh, there was some internal drama. Uh, about a week and a half ago, two week, about, about two weeks ago, huh? somebody adjusted the thermostat and tech dad was not impressed. That's me. Our thermostat in the warehouse over here, it's great in the winter because it uses um, air conditioning. Okay. In the summer, because we have an air conditioner and not a heat pump here, uh, we use a radiant tube. Uh, so gas radiant heating, but because of the build out that we did in the building, the original radiant tubes of which there were a total of four in these four units. Yeah. Well, three of them are gone now Oh. because they don't fit anymore because they were right. longer than we have left in the building after we built mezzanine over that part. And like, I, I don't know, even if you could leave it there above the mezzanine, you wouldn't because it'd be a fire hazard because you yeah. have something right next to a radiant heating tube. Yeah. So yeah. we only have one. We only have one radiant heating tube in this warehouse, and it's at the very end. Now, we have a fan. There's a fan that we spent, like, it's from, it's from big-ass fans. So it costs, like, $1,000 to buy this fan and install it. But the shooters never turn it on because it's kind of loud, and it's inconvenient to turn it on and off, which I get. I hear you. But someone... <laughs> Not knowing all of this. So what you're supposed to do is turn on the radiant tube and put on the fan so that it's not just boiling on one side and then cold on the other. Yeah. Uh, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn on the fan um, and not adjust the thermostat. So someone was like, I'm cold over here and adjusted the thermostat. So the warehouse was freaking like a freaking sauna while, it, while we were going through that cold snap. It's like <laughs> it was also cooking on the weekends. Like, guys, did you figure that one out? Uh, I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Okay. But the, the point was like, guys, don't please don't don't touch the thermostat. Look, I know it's not a perfect system, darn it. But just p turn on the fan. Just p put on the the circulation <laughs> fan. Um, I think when you hit like late twenties, early thirties, you just start caring about thermostats a lot. Yeah, I think so it's just a thing. So logistics. Um, locked. They put a lock on the thermostat. <laughs> they took the key and they took it over to the other building because nobody is ever supposed to adjust it. And it's possible <laughs> that maybe they overcorrected and things were cold for a bit, but I think they've got it dialed in now. Got it. Okay. All right. So now, now you all know the saga of the, uh, the thermostat adjustment. Was it chilly that what day? What it's like working behind the scenes. Maybe. Yeah. As for cooling, they partnered with Cooler Master to design this gigantic heat pipe array, which oh, paired cool. with the liquid yeah, metal cool. resulted in combustor temps that absolutely crushed the... Oh. Whoa. Okay, so whatever complaints other media were seeing if you're with the a, thermal solution, maybe that was an issue with their unit then. If you're having a hard time reading this, uh, the red line is framework, blue line is Asus, yellow line is Lenovo. So they, yeah, I crushed, I think is a pretty good word for that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's very good. That's a great result. I will yet again, you already said it, I will yet again say it sounds like most, if not all of the review units were pre-production, maybe not wise. Yeah. Continuing on. 
A16 from ASUS, which is running the exact same RX 7700S. The framework did peak higher than the Lenovo's RTX 4070, mm. but once the fans ramped up, it held its own. It's important to mention that the Lenovo unit was replaced with Noctua NTH1 in a previous project, so it could be possible that the framework would look even better here to a factory Lenovo. Remember the F1 stress test? That framework performed exceptionally well, staying under wow. 65 degrees on the CPU, while the wow. ASUS and the Lenovo are both hitting over 70 or even 80 degrees. And that's while maintaining a very Hold solid on. Lenovo. Are I think he's talking peaks there. Yeah, but what happened here? These both spike right here, and so this one spikes down. The F1 23 benchmark is not uh, canned, fully canned. It it runs, um, it's 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 dynamic. I, okay, sorry. What's the best way for me to describe? It's not exactly the same every time. Yeah. Like, all the AI is running. All the physics is running. Yeah. So sometimes you can just have... Something slightly different is going to happen. Something happens slightly different. You should just be kind of looking at overall how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are both hitting over 70 or even 80 degrees. And that's while maintaining a very solid 4.1 gigahertz on the average clock speed, Whoa. while A16 oh, wow. averaged closer to 2.7. Yikes. To be fair, we ran all these laptops in their default power configurations, but the tough A16's Radeon 7700S is reporting 80 degrees average on the core and 93 on the hotspot. The framework kept to a much more reasonable 68 and 80 degrees respectively. The webcam and microphone, which use the same module as the Framework 13, very cool, look and sound like this. Oh, okay. At least with a I was going to say, that was a big audio quality change. Yeah, I know, we got this. <laughs> we got this, bro. Big studio light in front of me, and if you shut it off, like this, in a pretty dim wow. and crappy environment. Not great, not terrible, and I did anecdotally hear that the microphone sounded better than my AirPods Pro too. so cool. And they do at least have physical shutoff switches, which is a nice touch. And we haven't like even that. talked about the display. The Framework 16 holds its own when it comes to color accuracy, reaching an average SDR Delta E of 1.5 and a max of 2.8. That's pretty in good. In part thanks to Windows Auto Color Management System, which only seems to support a few select displays. It shifts with it turned off, making the numbers much worse, so we'd recommend using it. The display is bright enough for outdoors what? over 500 nits. Okay. Motion clarity is decent enough at 165 hertz, which is great for gaming. But there are a couple of issues that are a bit hard to ignore, like the honestly kind of mid uniformity that results in visible vignetting on web pages and solid backgrounds. And somehow our unit's panel was pinched <laughs> under the removable plastic bezel for some reason it kind of looks like you could i've move seen around, that happen a uh, decent amount this leads me to the price as configured ignoring extra accessories like the expansion shell which isn't included if you spec a yeah. gpu and cost a hundred dollars on its own this is a twenty two hundred dollar laptop they're not gouging remember it's a small company building an entirely bespoke laptop that genuinely could and seems to already be changing an entire industry yeah and they have to pay their graphic What's designers that? to draw those little portraits of everybody yeah that's not free yeah yeah the keyboard stability and display uniformity are things that would normally be a deal breaker for me, especially at this price point, and I wouldn't blame you for feeling- They should have an on-site dog sitter. Okay, that's an inside joke people are not going to get. <laughs> but here's the thing. Fixing the keyboard is probably something you can DIY, as Alex showed earlier, and assuming Framework either fixes the issues or comes up with a panel upgrade down the road, I can probably live with that display for a while. For the utter flexibility, repairability, and the simple fact that this could be, theoretically, the last gaming laptop I'd ever need to buy. That's pretty freaking cool. So as long as Framework stays in business and follows through with their promises, I mean, they already have a history of doing so. When the CPU is too outdated or the GPU yeah, isn't strong enough for new That's actually games, a really good point. If these guys came out of nowhere and went straight at, we're doing a gaming laptop. That would have been the wrong move. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't believe them. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no way. The only thing that gives this any credibility is the fact that they've already... Oh, I was, I was about to... Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Hold on. Is the fact that they've already delivered multiple generations of upgrades on the Framework 13. So as yeah. far as I'm concerned, I believe them until they screw it up now. Yeah. As opposed to my default state you would have, have been yourself. not believing them until they actually do something before. Yeah. Precedent is good right now board gets gunked up and the battery dies. It's an easy swap. Instead of chucking away an entire machine, you can have your very own laptop of Theseus, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. All that's left is to decide if I want to keep my pre-order. But think of the modules, Jake. Right. And maybe they can make a module that would help me segue to our sponsor, oh Jawa. We've all been there trying to sell stuff the usual way. That was pretty good. I, I've, ta I've taught them well. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good video. That was really good. Yeah, it's almost like we job. have a style and we have a really good team and stuff. Um... Yeah, that was that was that was an awesome video. I really liked switching between the different hosts, kind of getting the different perspectives. Great job, everyone! Like, great job. Yeah, that was really good. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, first camera appearance as well. Super good. Oh yeah, John did great. That was great. Yep, I think it's a, I think it was a, the right call to just keep it for a short period. 
because I think that uh, while he did a great job, it can be hard to do like, I, I wasn't there when they were shooting it, but it can be hard to do it like can. long takes, Absolutely. which can make it a lot more work for the editor and stuff. Yep. Um, and it's it's nice to ease people into it, you know, get people kind of used to him as well. I also really personally, but you did a good job as a personal opinion flavor thing. I like expert in a thing presenting their section of a thing whether i've always the, really liked that whether they're the best presenter or not yeah you can get away with almost any level of host yeah as long as they're not on camera for too long yeah so that's something that we've used a lot when we've done factory tours for example yeah like when i did the intel tours i recognized pretty quickly that these were not folks that i could give like a 200 word spiel to um but I can do a little thing. But if I gave them exactly the intonation I wanted, gave them the eye line, and gave them like like 10 words or something like that, then I could get them in the video. They could do a great job. They could put their best foot forward. And then people could hear it right from the experts. And we get that that balance where I do my thing, which is to be a host. And they get to do their thing, which is to be an expert. And it enhances the video by, by putting those elements together, right? And I think that the team did a great job of doing that. Um, really, really good video. There's an official post from Framework on Framework's community page. Oh, can um, I go to your laptop? Sure. It's really long. Oh, wow. Um, but they address a bunch of stuff. High frequency noise from the main board, uh, buzzing noise from graphics module, CPU thermal module performance, uh, liquid metal barrier adjustments, cold GPU performance, uh, DPC watchdog violation blue screen, speech attenuated on the left or right channel, touchpad module sliding friction, display alignment, display color oh gamut, goodness. minor fix and finish okay, to input right, modules, right. keyboard detection, secondary SSD may disappear, display frozen after uh, smart muck switching. And they're, yeah. So maybe if you're interested, go read that. So what you're trying to say is they're on it like a bonnet. <laughs> like very very good circle I, yeah thank you fantastic thank you um, right, there's a channel super fun how to draw a circle i watched it now i know very popular <laughs> was it that's a short yeah it has like 100 million views or something like <laughs> wow like most our most successful video ever and it's just like can anyone at the company do a backflip yes we should do how to do a backflip no we shouldn't why because you know who it is who elijah What we should definitely do it now. Nope, we really shouldn't. <laughs> uh, Elijah, there you go. There you go. Revive channel super fun nope. by yourself. One short video, how to do a backflip. No, even a little. no other content. No mainline videos. Not even once. None of that kind of stuff. Yeah, how to draw a perfect circle. One hundred and seven million views. Wow, that's ridiculous. Crazy. If he screws up doing a backflip on work on work property and hits his head again, what happens? we're liable. That's why he will never do a backflip on work property. Let, Elijah, if you're watching, <laughs> no. What if you go to a, a trampoline place, like a, a, a gymnastics place with a foam pit and he backflips into a foam pit? Is he working? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Forbidden. <laughs> Can anyone else do a backflip? doesn't matter. Can you do a backflip? On a trampoline? Yeah. Okay. In fact, I think there's a, uh, I think uh, Yvonne uploaded a video of me attempting one at some point on Twitter. Oh. And I... Uh, I it seemed like something you might be able to do. I, I like, you know how our trampoline has the, the yeah. net around it? I like hit the net because I, like I almost backflipped right, like right out of the trampoline because it had been a long time and I jumped back instead of jumping up. Uh, anyway. Oh boy. Um, no. <laughs> okay. What else are we talking about? Oh, uh, merch <clears throat> messages. Yeah. Guys, the way to interact with the show.